Howdy everyone, it's me once again, the one and only Killer Lord Ann. And today, of course, I'm going to be reviewing another obscured, low-budget feature titled Five Fingers of Death. Yes, of course, one of those low-budget comfort features from long ago I'm reviewing. It was also titled as King Boxer because why? I, I, I don't know. But the film was also re retitled as Number One Fist in the Ward. Yeah, like that doesn't make this confusing at all. So yeah, as you can see, his hands all bloody and whatnot, all red and everything. So at least, I guess, to go along with the title of the movie, I suppose. So yeah, so that's something I guess you can say. Yeah, I'm reviewing the uh, the American English dub version, of course, and it was released in the United States by Warner Brothers in March of 1973 as Five Fingers of Death. The film was meant to uh, capitalize on the success of the Warner Brothers TV show uh, Kung Fu, though it has nothing to do with that show like at all. I was responsible, at least in some ways, the beginning of the North American Kung Fu craze during the 1970s, I guess. So, that's something, I guess. Uh, I guess that's who count for something, of course, folks. And, yeah, I guess this in some ways helped to um, go along with that, of course. And... The thing is that, of course, uh, the this is the kind of movie I would like to talk about anyway, because I do enjoy watching and reviewing obscured movies, any regards of genre. I know I'm usually reviewing old movies from the Kung Fu genre, or the horror genre primarily, but I just, uh, um, I review other obscure stuff too sometimes, but these like the mostly the two, I guess. Yeah, it's pink. So what? Anyway, as usual, folks, let's just dig into the plot, shall we? So let's begin. So what's going on is that there are these two competing Kung Fu schools. Because the thing is that they are preparing for this very important martial arts tournament that's coming up. So yeah, things will get pretty damn crazy. So there is this promising young martial arts student and let's just say that he has spent a good chunk of his life, if not most of it, studying under a master and has fallen in love with the master's daughter. And yes, of course, this does complicate matters, as you can guess, you, of course. So the thing is that after this master had failed to properly fight off a group of thugs, he sends a main character to study under a superior master. So he instructs him to pretty much uh, learn this type of fighting style and defeat the local martial arts tyrant because he's an asshole. And let's just say that in an upcoming tournament, as I was saying, in order to, um, let's say, earn that daughter's hand, in a relationship and whatnot, so yeah, that's something I guess you can say. So, um, but the thing is that old main character also meets this, um, this young female single, and um, on the road to the city, and yeah, let's just say that you know things do become rather crazy, and yes, there's gonna be quite a bit of fighting throughout the entire movie. It's a kung fu movie would expect. Of course, there's going to be plenty of martial arts right there, folks. The fight scenes are really, 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 really well choreographed in this one, folks. I liked how they were done here, folks. It's something, um, of course, I do have to make a compliment on, of course. But, um, the thing is that with that one sing uh, singer, he does, our main character does rescue her from these thugs and whatnot, and it does give a good excuse to have a fight scene, I guess you would say. And the fighting is actually, like I was saying, it was nicely done in here. It's a pretty fast pace. So, I did like that. 
I really did. So, yeah, the thing is that it's on, also on my, um, let's see here. Oh, yeah. On my to do list. I know technically, like I said before, this a notebook, I know that. But I just call my to do list because I have a lot of stuff to review, of course. And this is one of those movies I have to review. So, I guess it won't hurt to review another Kung Fu movie since I've been reviewing quite a few of these um, for a good while already. So, and um, I know at times it does take me a while to get back to this genre, which in some way is a bit of a damn shame because I like these movies, I really do. Especially the really obscure, rare films to, that's hard to find, especially from like way long ago. Obviously, especially those from way back when. But yeah, I I miss these. I really do. So, all in all, I can't say this was pretty good. I liked it. Even though the dubbing needs some work. The dubbing in here, the English dubbing was decent, actually. So, yeah, the dubbing wasn't too bad, I suppose. No, it wasn't too bad. I can say that I liked the, the, the overall story, I guess. It wasn't... The story overall story wasn't too bad either. I like that way they constructed the story. Uh, and of course, it's pretty action-packed, like you might expect when it comes to these type of movies. That's one of the things you do expect when it comes to this type of stuff, of course. But, all in all, I do recommend it. If you're a fan of these types of movies, or you just want to try out some of the older stuff, I would say check this one out. Even if you're just a casual viewer of the genre, I'll say check this one out. This is definitely one of the better uh, Kung Fu flicks I'm reviewing here, folks. So, this is not too bad. This is not too shabby. No. So, I'll say, give it a shot. I liked it. So, all in all, I liked it. I liked what was going here, and of course, and I like what with the music trying to help. The music does help to give us some, I guess, mood, I guess, for this, for this flick. Yeah. Anyway, so I mean, there's not much I can complain really about this kind of a thing, like at all. I did think that the um, uh, the pace is good. The film did not feel too long, really. I mean, these types, the old Kung Fu films, tend to be fairly short anyway. Maybe it's for the better, I guess. But um, I mean, I'm not saying it can't work if it's like really long, but sometimes. Shorter is better. So it depends what the movie is, I guess. But all in all, like I was saying, it's not too shabby. No, not too shabby. Especially considering the fact that, yeah, this was made way before the really fancy special effects and whatnot. So that's one of the things I don't like about the more modern day Kung Fu movies because a lot of them I tend to be CGI heavy. Yeah, those exist. Ugh. I don't like those, really. Yeah, a lot of the more modern-day Kung Fu movies that tend to be CGI heavy. Ah, no. No. So, I like I like how it's done here. It's more practical. Is what I'm getting at. It's way more practical. I, I miss... I really do miss the style of, of filmmaking, regardless of genre, and practical stuff. Yeah. It seems to be a rarity nowadays. Oh, boy. Yeah, like CGI took over the place, I suppose. I know, that makes me sound really old. But you have to remember, folks, I am over 100 years old. Boy. So, yeah. There's that. Mm -hmm. Anyway, I'll give this film an overall rating of a 7.1 out of 10. It's a 7.1 out of 10 for me, folks. And as always, thanks for watching, and take care. Until next time, see ya. Oh, yeah. Later.